My fellow Canadians, good evening. In the West, good afternoon. I want to speak directly to you today because Canada is at a crossroads. Je sais que la lutte contre la COVID-19 a été difficile pour tous les Canadiens durant les six derniers mois. Pour trop de gens, c'est une question de vie ou de mort. Et pour nous tous, collectivement, c'est le combat de notre génération. Au printemps, on a tous travaillé ensemble pour aplatir la courbe et nos efforts ont porté fruit. Mais maintenant, le virus est en train de revenir en force dans plusieurs parties du pays. In our four biggest provinces, the second wave isn't just starting, it's already underway. The numbers are clear. Back on March 13th, when we went into lockdown, there were 47 new cases of COVID-19. Yesterday alone, we had well over a thousand. We're on the brink of a fall that could be much worse than the spring. I know this isn't the news that any of us wanted to hear. And we can't change today's numbers or even tomorrow's. Those were already decided by what we did or didn't do two weeks ago. But what we can change is where we are in October and into the winter. It's all too likely we won't be gathering for Thanksgiving, but we still have a shot at Christmas. Together, we have the power to get the second wave under control. I know we can do it because we've already done it once before. In the spring, we all did our part by staying home. And this fall, we have even more tools in the toolbox. People are wearing masks. That's critical, so keep it up. We've got the COVID Alert app. Take the teacher who felt fine, but who tested positive after the app warned her she'd been exposed. COVID Alert meant she went home instead of the classroom. It's a powerful, free tool that's easy to use and protects your privacy. So if you haven't already, download it off the App Store or Google Play. It's one more way to keep ourselves and others safe. Another is to get your flu shot this fall. Les gestes qu'on pose aujourd'hui vont faire toute la différence sur ce qui arrivera dans deux semaines et dans deux mois. Portez un masque, ça sauve des vies. Lavez vos mains, gardez vos distances, faites-vous vacciner contre la grippe. Écoutez les agences de santé publique. Comme la docteur Tam l'a dit hier, limitez votre cercle social. Évitez de prendre des risques qui ne sont pas nécessaires. Ce n'est pas le temps de faire des parties. Personne n'est invincible et vos proches ne le sont pas non plus. On ne peut pas baisser nos gardes, même dans les endroits où le nombre de cas est encore bas. Et tout le monde, s'il vous plaît, téléchargez l'appli Alerte COVID. Elle est facile et gratuite. Elle préserve votre vie privée et c'est un geste qui va vous protéger, vous et les gens autour de vous. This is the time for all of us, as Canadians, to do our part for our country, as government does its part for you. There is a covenant between government and the people government serves. You need to know that you can rely on us, just like you can rely on each other. Alors qu'on fait face à cette crise, alors qu'on s'apprête à rebâtir, on va continuer d'être là pour vous. Le gouvernement a présenté un plan à quatre piliers pour répondre à cette crise. La première chose qu'il faut faire, c'est de protéger la santé des gens. Les actions de nos parents et de nos grands-parents ceux de la génération qui ont affronté la Grande Dépression et la Deuxième Guerre mondiale, nous rappellent qu'il faut être résilient et patient en temps de crise. Ils ont bâti le monde d'aujourd'hui. Et c'est maintenant à nous de bâtir le monde de demain, en commençant par les protéger. La situation vécue par trop de nos aînés dans les centres de soins de longue durée est inacceptable. Il faut que ça change et ça va changer. Au printemps, on a envoyé les forces armées pour aider et la Croix-Rouge est encore sur le terrain. On va travailler dès maintenant avec les provinces et les territoires pour établir de nouvelles normes nationales pour les soins de longue durée. Job one is keeping people safe. That's why we're signing deals on multiple potential vaccines, 
on therapeutics, on personal protective equipment. In fact, because we mobilized this spring, Canadians are now producing almost every type of PPE we need. We're helping the provinces and territories ramp up their capacity on testing while creating a federal response team for surge demand. And as soon as there's approval for faster tests to be used safely, we'll get them out across the country. If you need a test, you should be able to get one and get it quickly. This is about safety and it's about what's right for Canadians. Protecting your health is the best thing we can do for the economy. So that's what we're working on first. And that brings me to the second part of the plan, supporting Canadians through this pandemic. The federal government will have your back, whatever it takes to help you get through this crisis. Maybe you were one of the almost 9 million people who used the Canada Emergency Response Benefit this spring. We will continue to support all those who need it with a strengthened and broadened employment insurance system. Maybe your boss was able to keep you on the job or hire you back because the emergency wage subsidy helped with the payroll. People still need this program, so we're extending it right through to next summer. Or perhaps you're a business owner needing extra help to bridge to better times. For you, among other measures, we're expanding the Canada Emergency Business Account. And there's a lot more we're going to do. Go to canada.ca slash coronavirus to see what support is available right now and how to apply. I know some people are asking how we can afford to do all this for Canadians. That's fair. That low interest rates mean we can afford it. And in fact, doing less would end up costing far more. Doing less would mean a slower recovery and bigger deficits in the long run. While we're dealing with this pandemic, I don't want you or your parent or your friend to take on debt that your government can better shoulder. So yes, in the short term, we'll keep investing. But beyond the emergency, as we start to build back better, we must do that in a fiscally and sustainable way. Investing for our recovery must be done responsibly. Vous savez, la pandémie dévoile des inégalités fondamentales dans notre société, mais là, on a l'opportunité d'agir pour que ça change. On va bâtir une société meilleure pour tous en rendant du même coup l'économie meilleure pour tous. Il s'agit en fait du troisième pilier de l'approche du gouvernement. By creating a Canada-wide early learning and child care system, we'll ensure that kids have access to care and that no parent, especially no mother, has to put their career on, home, on hold. This pandemic has reminded us all that building strong social supports is essential to growing the economy. By accelerating progress on national universal pharmacare, we'll get people the medicine they need while alleviating pressure on the healthcare system. En investissant pour éliminer l'itinérance chronique, on va créer des communautés en santé et plus prospères. Le logement, c'est pas juste un problème, c'est aussi une solution. Ça crée des emplois, ça permet aux gens de s'épanouir et de contribuer. On veut tous bâtir un pays plus fort pour tout le monde. Pour ce faire, on doit redoubler nos efforts pour lutter contre les changements climatiques. C'est aussi la meilleure façon d'assurer de bons emplois pour aujourd'hui et pour demain. Energy workers innovating to decarbonize. Auto workers building zero emission vehicles. Engineers and construction workers delivering green retrofits for our homes and buildings. These are some of the people who will create a competitive economy of the future. As we do this work, protecting people's health, supporting Canadians, building back better, we can't forget what it's all for. Making sure that everyone can participate to their full potential. And that's the final part of the plan. As a country, we must keep making progress on reconciliation with Indigenous peoples and on fighting systemic racism. Diversity is not just our strength, it's our competitive edge. 
Nos différences nous enrichissent, quelle que soit la couleur de notre peau, nos croyances, notre culture, notre langue. Dans notre pays, on est fier d'avoir deux langues officielles, le français et l'anglais, qu'on va continuer de protéger. Au Canada, on sait qu'on est plus fort quand on est uni et quand on s'entraide. On affronte les défis ensemble. C'est ça qui nous a aidé à gérer la crise mieux que bien d'autres. This is not the first time our country has been called to stand united and strong. In the face of change, our greatest generation showed us that overcoming crisis isn't easy. They didn't give up, and neither can we. To parents feeling like you can't get your life under control, to kids wondering why mom and dad can't just fix this, to seniors feeling like there's nothing you can do, and thinking about all the things you can't do. That's understandable. But can't will not define us. We can bend the curve. We can build a stronger future. We can define the change. Les Canadiens, on est des gens qui disent, je suis capable. Dans chaque secteur, aux quatre coins du pays, chacun d'entre nous est enfin train de faire sa part. L'histoire de cette pandémie, c'est l'histoire de gens qui font des sacrifices, de gens qui travaillent fort chaque jour pour être là les uns pour les autres. Et c'est surtout l'histoire de nos travailleurs de première ligne, des héros d'un océan à l'autre qui n'ont jamais hésité, qui n'ont jamais reculé face à ce combat. Vous êtes une source d'inspiration pour nous tous. On est à la croisée des chemins et l'avenir est entre nos mains. We're at a crossroads. There are many days to go before we get to the other side of this. But there are also many of us to get us there, so long as we each remember to do our part. And I know that we will. We are Canadians. And together, there's nothing we can't do. Prenez soin de vous, mes amis. Merci.